Hey there, it's Gregson. Welcome back to Shifting Lanes. In today's video, we are going to talk about the Jeep Gladiator and what you need to know about this truck before you research it, compare it to others in its class, or buy it. And even if you're not in the market for one, stick around and watch all the way to the end because there's some interesting information I found when researching for this video that you may have never known before. In this video, we'll be going over what to look for on Gladiators, both new and old. Things like some common issues, any major service bulletins, any major recalls, reliability ratings, what's new for 2021 versus the 2020. 20 model year and what to expect for 2022. If you're here because of this video, consider watching our other content as well. We make tons of videos at Shifting Lanes on new car reviews, other what to know videos, consumer advice recommendations, and automotive news. If you'd like to see any of those, check the description below for playlists of everything we do or click the card above for a hand-picked video for you. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up at the end if you enjoyed it or found it informative. Jeep fans, automotive enthusiasts, and journalists alike had been wondering for more than two decades when Jeep would finally bring back a truck-like vehicle. Ever since the Gladiator concept was revealed in late 2004, it seemed like with every passing year that a Jeep truck would never see the light of day. Then finally, 15 years later in the spring of 2019, the Gladiator went on sale and became Jeep's first vehicle offered with a bed since the early 1990s. The name Gladiator, interestingly enough, was used on Jeeps previously as the original one was made from 1962 to 1988 and was known as the J series after 1971. This version of the Gladiator is basically a more versatile Jeep Wrangler and that earned it a Car and Driver Editor's Choice Award in early 2021. The new Gladiator, much like other Jeeps, especially the Wrangler, is no doubt going to be a success as it's already garnered a cult following. In early 2020, it was looking a bit like a sales flop. but then became a nice sales success in later 2020 with 77,542 units sold. 2021 sales are already looking stronger than last year as well. But with any new car, it's bound to have some flaws. And with that said, let's talk about some of the common issues with the Gladiator. Carcomplaints.com is a great resource to check what's wrong with cars these days, both new and old. And it only has two top issues for the Gladiator right now, mostly because it's such a new car. They are wandering at highway speeds on the 2020 Gladiator with an average cost to fix of not applicable at an average mileage of 2,000 miles. With a not applicable price, there's not a fix for this yet. So when that becomes available, if there is one, that price will be shown here on the website. And lastly, steering wanders on the 2021 Gladiator with an average cost to fix of NA again at an average mileage of zero miles. Zero miles mostly because this is a known issue and this car is brand new. The wandering steering issue has been noted widely online and in many journals, so this could be a turnoff for many buyers. However, this issue doesn't seem to be extremely widespread, and there's no recall associated with it, so it's likely an issue with not too many units. However, take this into consideration if you're looking to buy. If you test drive one and you feel it may be wandering on the highway, then be prepared to walk away, or even test drive multiple different units to see if you have the same experience. Other problems noted on the Gladiator range from engine issues to drivetrain problems, suspension problems and brake issues among others. These issues don't seem numerous and are probably just one-off issues. Next, let's talk about the technical service bulletins or TSBs for the Gladiator. If you didn't know, a TSB is a communication from the manufacturer, like Jeep, that document recommended procedures for repairing vehicles and they happen when there are several occurrences of an unanticipated problem. For example, if consumers keep reporting that their doors won't lock because a wire in the door is known to disconnect and it's happening across many different shops or dealers, the manufacturer will look into it, and if there's a fix, issue a TSB so that if it happens again, the fix is easily understood and rectified. The manufacturer may also find fixes proactively and issue a TSB if the fix does not require a recall. For the Gladiator, you may be surprised to learn that there are hundreds of TSBs listed for both model years. However, it's important to remember that this isn't necessarily a standard for reliability. Almost all cars have tons of TSBs for each year they are produced, so take this into consideration when doing your research. I won't go into all of the TSBs they list, but but if you're more DIY inclined, it's worth poking around in the TSBs should you find something wrong with your vehicle and want to fix it yourself. You may find a TSB with the fix you need and could save yourself hundreds if not thousands in repair costs with the right know-how. You can find TSBs listed on sites like Car Complaints as TSBs need to be public knowledge by law. But I will mention that if you do find something wrong, ask the dealer first with such a new car because you'll likely have a warranty that should cover you for almost anything. And on that note, let's talk about any active recalls that the Gladiator has. 
You can find these as well as other complaints, manufacturer communications, and investigation information at the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration or NHTSA for short. I won't go into all of the recalls, but here are a few interesting ones to watch out for. All of these relate to the 2020 Gladiator. First is clutch pressure plate may overheat. Overheated clutch components may increase the risk of a fire. Additionally, damage to other nearby components can result in debris falling onto the road or a loss of drive, increasing the risk of a crash. Now, FZA's fix for this is to add software to reduce engine torque capability when clutch assembly temperatures rise to a level that may damage the inner pressure plate. Next is seat belt retractor may not slow movement. In the event of a crash, if the front seat belts fail to lock, there is an increased risk of injury. Again, this is a new recall, so just take it to your dealer and they'll fix it for you. And finally, rear drive shaft missing grease in monoblock joint. A joint without grease may overheat and seize, possibly causing the drive shaft to fracture, resulting in a sudden loss of drive power. If the drive shaft completely separates from the vehicle, it may become a road hazard. Either of these scenarios can increase the risk of a crash. This one had FCA replace entire drive shafts on certain Gladiator models. Currently, the 2021 Gladiator only has one recall on it, but we can chalk that up to it being just newer. More recalls may trickle in over time. Next, let's talk about overall reliability. And you may be surprised at this one. Consumer Reports rank the 2021 Gladiator as a top three choice in the compact pickup truck realm, giving it a solid 65 out of 100, good for number two on the list. It is only bested by the Honda Ridgeline, which comes in at an 80 out of 100, a whopping 15 points above. And Car and Driver has similar ratings with their top three being the Ridgeline, the Gladiator, and the Chevy Colorado. Interestingly enough, both Car and Driver and Consumer Reports both note that the steering is decidedly wandering on the highway, which aligns to the biggest complaint found online with this truck. Still, a brand new vehicle from Jeep with not a ton of recalls, minimal complaints, and a top two rating from very trusted sources means that reliability is, as I said, surprisingly, on the top end for the Gladiator. I say surprising because the Wrangler has some of the worst reliability ratings out there, and that's the sister platform to the Gladiator. Any way you slice it, reliability shouldn't be a concern if you're looking to purchase one. It's also worth noting that Consumer Reports gives the Gladiator a recommended rating, but that's not surprising given what you've already seen in this video and in other reviews across the internet if you've read them. For 2021, you can option a Gladiator in one of many different ways. In fact, there's 12 different trims to choose from. Prices range from $34,040 for the base model sport trim and go all the way up to a $52,240 version in the high altitude trim. Of course, these are MSRP numbers and will inflate greatly with destination fees and optional extras. So with the 2021 version on sale now, what what exactly is different from the 2020 version? After all, this is a truck that's barely two years old. The Gladiator, which has enlarged grill slots for added cooling, gets a diesel version to add to the lineup, which is a 3 liter V6 and develops 260 horsepower and a pretty substantial 442 pound feet of torque. You can have the diesel engine on the Sport, Overland, and Rubicon models. And that's it. That's all that's new. But I mean, what did you expect from such a new truck? Jeep isn't about to make all kinds of crazy changes this soon in its life cycle. But actually, that's where things get kind of interesting because here's what everyone really needs to know about the 2022 Jeep Gladiator. What's coming next? The 2022 version should be out this fall. Given that there hasn't been any announcements on new trims or special models, like the Wrangler 392 with a V8, for instance, we can expect pricing to stay relatively similar to the 2021 version. Mid-30s to mid-50s is what you should expect. The aforementioned Wrangler 392 is an interesting test case because as I stated earlier, the Wrangler is a sister vehicle to the Gladiator. For 2022, I wouldn't hold your breath for a V8 Gladiator. But given Jeep's propensity for going a bit nutty with their off-road vehicles, you can bet your ass that version will be coming in the next few years. And it gets a bit more interesting than that. On trim levels, you may expect the Gladiator would stay the same as well, but there's recently been a photo leak to the contrary. Since the Wrangler has been announced with a 4xE variant, and that, yes, is pronounced 4xE, not 4XE, we We'd expect the Gladiator to get that treatment as well. But unlike the V8, we may be getting it in 2022. See, Jeep recently changed their Facebook cover photo to be a 4xE teaser. And to the untrained eye, it looks like the Wrangler version. But when you look closer, you'll see a sharp angled roll bar in the driver's side rear view mirror that you won't find on the four-door Wrangler 4xE. So will we be getting the plug-in hybrid Gladiator in 2022? Maybe, given this subtle leak. When it does 
come out either in 2022 or for sure in 2023, expect the same trims as the Wrangler, the Sahara, the Rubicon, and the high altitude. Lastly, with all this being said, do we recommend you go in to buy the Jeep Gladiator if you've made the decision to purchase? That answer is a big time yes. If you're a fan of off-roading and just want a pickup truck bed, you pretty much just can't go wrong here. Unlike the Wrangler, reliability doesn't seem to be much of an issue as of yet based on information out there. It's widely lauded as a great compact truck with excellent capabilities and just a few minor issues. If bigger issues or other random issues do crop up, you'll for sure have a warranty to take care of anything. If you're looking for a compact pickup, the Gladiator should be on your shortlist to test drive, so go ahead and shop with confidence. I hope that this video does help you in making your buying decision a bit easier or has made you a better informed owner. If you want to follow us outside of YouTube, you can find us at Shifting Lanes on Facebook and Instagram, where we post about the cars we review, our personal cars, and industry news and adventures. Again, my name is Gregson. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, until next time.